Shalom and praise the Lord. Uh, thank you everyone for joining this uh, weekly uh, mentoring hour. We are so glad that uh, all of you could join this morning. Jai uh, Masi, Pastor. Jai Masi Sabko. Just so glad to have all of you on this mentoring uh, hour this morning. Uh, this mentoring hour, we basically, one of our um, faculty will uh, share very briefly on a topic after which uh, we will leave the time open for all of you to ask any questions if you have based on what was shared or if you have any doubts you could even ask your doubts so you can please feel free to um, you know uh, type your uh, doubts or your uh, questions that you have in the chat section or you could even unmute your mics and um, ask your doubts and questions. Uh, your doubts and questions can be based on what was shared this morning, um, or it could also be uh, some things that were pertaining to what was taught in the class, the lectures, uh, or you know something pertaining to life, to ministry, uh, what you're reading from the Word of God. If you have any doubts, you could even go ahead and ask your uh, doubts and questions. Um, this morning, we have uh, Pastor Jay Kumar Isaiah, who would uh, share on the topic, the renewed mind. Before um, uh, we call on Pastor Jay Kumar to share, uh, can one of our students please lead us in prayer? Anyone can lead us in prayer, please? Can I ask Anne Prezi Binu to lead us in prayer? Anne or Jeram, anyone can lead us in prayer, please, this morning, one of the students. Heavenly Father, we just thank you once again for this uh, hour of mentoring. Father, we just pray, Lord, that as we study your word, Lord, that your word will come alive and speak to us, Father. And... Uh, speak into the in, into our lives father and uh, help us continue to grow in your word lord we also pray lord that you'll give us a hunger for your word father and you 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 help us to spend more time in your word lord and li live out our lives lord that uh, will will bring glory to your name father we, we, we just Pray, Lord, for a blessing upon all our staff and all the students, Lord. And may this this day and the days to come, you know, help us grow, Lord, into your likeness. We ask all of this, Lord Jesus, in thy precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Sanjay. Over to Pastor Jay Kumar Isaiah. He will be sharing on the renewed mind. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Um, let me just share the screen. Today, um, we're looking at an interesting topic, um, something that um, something that can be life-changing, actually. Um, so it's about, um, I hope you can share the, I mean, you can see the screen. It's about um, renewing the mind and how uh, renewing the mind is a key for transformation. Right, one of the things that can aid us in transformation. Now, um, when we look at uh, this word transformation, it means it's a marked, dramatic, and radical change. A marked change, you know, something that is very tangible, <clears throat> a dramatic change, and a radical change. You know, so that's transformation. And the Greek word used, um, you know, in Romans chapter twelve, verse two, is uh, metamorpho, which means. Uh, um, you know, the, the picture there is that of um, a larva becoming a butterfly, uh, the process, the whole process of transformation, changing from one state to another, where uh, we see that um, uh, the first stage and the last stage, you know, there's no visible, uh, you know, uh, likelihood, there's no similarity, it's total change, right? So it's a transformation is a marked, um, dramatic, uh, somebody raised their hand. Um, so what we'll do is, uh, We'll take about 10 minutes to finish, and then you can ask questions. Sugat, Gekwad, I think see your raised hand. I don't know if it was a mistake. Anyway, so um, 
the transformation is um, you know it's a marked dramatic radical change right so um so as believers in the lord jesus christ um and as ministers so we are looking for change right in the lives of people whom we are ministering to and personally in our own lives as we follow the lord jesus and uh, as we walk journey with him um we are looking for change and the lord is looking for change in us right and we are changed and change happens uh, at times um unintentionally you know like we are in the presence of god and we are changed like second corinthians 3 and verse 18 says that we are changed um just as we behold his glory we are changed from uh, one level of glory to another into the same image that we behold so uh, it happens unintentionally unintentionally certain changes like biological growth also happens unintentionally but changes uh, when it comes to maturity and spiritual growth it, it it is intentional right so we see that uh, we are looking for change we want change right uh, in our own lives um you know change in the way we think change in the way we speak change in the way we act maybe um we want we want to see change and maybe we are working at it and we want to see that change in others as well um and change from you know who we are um to who we are in Christ you know we know that um that potentially this is who we are in Christ we know the you know the truth of who we have become in Christ but we see that that change has to uh, has to manifest right? that change has to happen because we are spirit soul and body and we are changed in our spirit as new creations and um, the soul part of us which is our mind our will our emotions um, everything um okay um go a little slow fine um so that uh needs change right so from who we are to who we know that we have become in Christ um that truth to be conformed to the image of Christ in other words Christ likeness to be changed from uh from glory to glory to be changed to the image of Christ right so um so change can happen or change we all we all look forward to change right so, but we see in this scripture uh Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 it says that um and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god right just want to draw our attention to you know uh, a few words here one is do not be conformed to this world meaning don't fit into the pattern of this world don't fit into the world's way of doing things the world's way of thinking etc but be transformed okay be transformed how by the renewing of your mind okay so we see that a key for transformation or a or a way to see transformation uh, in our lives is to renew our mind or change our mind or change our thoughts right so we see that um uh transformation is linked to our thoughts or more specifically transformation is linked to our renewed thoughts right so conversely the other thing other way also can happen you know transformation for good or transformation into christ likeness uh, happens this way but transformation into something else or you know a transformation or into something that we don't want to see also can happen when our when because it is linked to our unrenewed thoughts right when our thoughts are not renewed then there can be no transformation into christ likeness but on the other hand it can happen um uh, you know it, it instead of positive change we can see that there is um, there is negative change or there is no change right so very so uh, so again let's look at that verse again so do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so it is linked to our thoughts so which means that our thoughts are powerful okay our thoughts our thoughts are powerful our imaginations matter our ideas ideas have consequences you know when we implement it here are some fun facts about thoughts 
you know um so the the scientists say that um as a human being we have about 70000 thoughts per day you know during our waking moment um waking moments the times when we are awake 70000 thoughts you know, can you imagine Right. Even as you are sitting here, there are thoughts going on. You know, you might be thinking about breakfast. You might be thinking about you know the fact that you're hungry, or you might be focusing on what is being, uh, what you are hearing, um, what is being said. So there are thoughts going on. Okay. Secondly, the speed of thought is 268 miles per hour. You know, between these neurons in our brain, the speed of thought. Uh, I don't know how they calculated it, but they did it. It's 268 miles per hour which is faster than uh, a Formula One racing car. A Formula One racing car apparently goes at 230 miles per hour or maximum 240 miles per hour. But the speed of thought is much, much faster, 268 miles per hour. Okay. And what about the capacity, capacity of our mind right, uh, to, to hold things, uh, the, the capacity um, to uh, to retain things right uh, apparently it's 2.5 petabytes which means it's 2.5 million gigabytes right so they say that 3 million hours of videos actually potentially theoretically it can actually store right so so our thoughts are powerful our mind is powerful um, and uh, when when we renew or make new our mind it results in transformation right okay so since thoughts are powerful uh, thoughts are influential you know thoughts influence our actions right? if you look at it before every action uh, whether it's a there, there could be a conscious thought which means we intentionally plan and do it let's say you're you're, you're saying thinking oh, I'm, I'm feeling hungry um, I feel like having a masala dosa and one filter coffee right so you plan so there is a thought and then you act on it but thoughts can also be not conscious or subconscious right someone throws something and as a reflex action you know we we lift our hands and catch it you know, something comes and then we duck it can be also uh, you know subconscious unintentional but a thought is there before every action so thoughts influence our actions actions influence our behavior and uh, Therefore, it results in our lifestyle. But it begins with our thoughts. Right? So thoughts are powerful. Um, if you want to change anything, if you want to change our action, if you want to change our behavior, if you want to change our lifestyle, um, it begins with the thoughts. Our lifestyle doesn't change because of our behavior or action, but it starts by um, because of the change in our thoughts. Thoughts also affect our thoughts. Right? Thoughts are powerful. Thoughts affect our emotions, influence our emotions. For example, if we, you know, if you are continuing to think negative thoughts, uh, thoughts which are, uh, you know, you, you think that uh, thoughts of failure or negative thoughts, uh, thoughts that something bad is going to happen, something that uh, will never be, um, you know, success in life, fearful thoughts, it affects our emotions, it affects our mood. Right, so we we uh, we have a bad mood, or we are in a negative mood. Right? We are in a fearful mood because of our thoughts. Right, so thoughts affect our influ uh, emotions, influence our emotions. Um, thoughts also, um, you know, uh, thoughts also influence our imaginations, and our imaginations can actually make us or break us. Right, just think about it. Right? If you're continuing to imagine good things, positive things, um, it can make us, right? It can make us, meaning it can empower us to go out and do, do things. Or if we are thinking of our imagination is full of um, things that, uh, that are negative and, and something, um, uh, you know, something that, is, that can be uh, uh, tragic, then it can impair us. We will be we will we will be imprisoned because of our imaginations that we will not venture out and do anything. So um, again, goes on to uh, say how powerful thoughts are. Okay, so let's look at that second part of that verse, which says that be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So there is transformation available, transformation uh, where it is possible. Um, 
because transformation in our thoughts, transformation in our speech, action, everything. And it's linked to the renewing or making new of our of our minds, right? And specifically our thoughts, right? So when we say renew, it can mean either to repair or fix. You know, maybe there's imaginations or thoughts that are hurting us, um, that are hurtful, and that can be fixed, that can be made new, repaired. It also means to renovate. Renovate meaning, you know, rearrange. Right? Maybe you want to renovate your house, renovate your room, you know, change the furniture a bit. Um, maybe, you know, maybe the, you know, as soon as you enter the door, there, there is a there is a sofa that is there blocking the way and you're not able, you have to, um, you know, things are congested and so on. It needs to be arranged. Right? Um, the sofa needs to be put in the right place. The chairs need to be put in the right place so that it can be comfortable. So it, it needs a renovation. And sometimes it, it means reform reformation or reformation, right? a restructuring of things. Maybe a wall needs to be broken down. Right? Um, those are serious structural changes, but this is what it means. You know, it, it encompasses everything. Be renewed. Um, so when there's renewal, there is transformation. Okay. So wh why renew? Um, very quickly, uh, a, a few things here. You know, uh, renew renewal. Obviously, renewing of our thoughts results in transformation. But we also need to understand that our mind is a battlefield. Right. Um, let me just read a few verses here. First Peter. 2 and verse 11, uh, it says that, uh, 1 Peter 2 verse 11, um, it talks about how, um, just a minute please, it is, um, okay, I'm sorry, I, I thought I'll present that, I don't have that here. Okay, 1 Peter 2 and verse 11, this is what it says, it says, uh, beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. So we see it's a battlefield. So these fleshly lusts um, which actually war against our soul. So if there are lustful thoughts, if there are, if we are giving in to fleshly lusts, it's it's war, it's combat, it's battle. So in, in a war, there are casualties. In a war, there are, um, you know, their lives are um, lost and there is damage, collateral damage. And that happens uh, in our minds, right? So things that maybe we built up over the years, you know, faith and uh, truth, um, which are built up, that is broken down because we entertain fleshly lusts. Okay? It's a battlefield. Um, Proverbs 6, 32, 33 also talks about the same thing, that uh, adultery talks about the act of adultery, how it, uh, it damages our soul. Um, right, uh, which is mind, will, and emotions. Right? Second thing is uh, our understanding. We need to understand that we can have different mindsets, okay? Uh, and renewal actually helps change that mindset. Um, if you look at uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14, uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse uh, 14, it says, uh, for the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So it talks about the natural man or a person with a natural mindset, which means that they are driven by what is rational only and not open to faith, not open to things of the spirit. Right? So it says here, a natural man does not receive. So you know, if I need to uh, receive the things of the spirit, I need to renew my mind from a natural mindset to a spiritual mindset, right? Then it talks about carnal mind. That's even more dangerous. Romans chapter 8 says, um, those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. And it says to be carnally minded is death. Um, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So here's a believer having a carnal mindset, okay. a believer born again, new creation, but having a carnal mindset. So he can, he is uh, unable, he's uh, enmity of God. It says here, it's not subject to the law of God and not indeed can be. So it's the whole life, everything is rebelling uh, against God. Okay. Uh, and thirdly, another reason is stronghold. You know, there are thoughts 
there are reasonings, there are arguments, uh, couple uh, added with emotions and imaginations, which are like strong holes in our minds, you know, fortresses in our minds. So these thought patterns or these strong holes pull us back. Every time we want to do something, holds us back. It's like a stronghold. It's like a prison. Right? And these strongholds need to come down. And for strongholds uh, need uh, to come down, we need to um, renew our mind and not be conformed, but be transformed. And strongholds can be brought down. And Second Corinthians 10 talks about that and how there are arguments and how there are reasonings. And we bring them down. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God is, needs to be brought down. OK. Um, OK. So how do we renew? OK, lastly, this is the last thing. How do we renew? Okay. Uh, so we renew by a simple thing. And there are, there's more to it. But we renew our minds by discarding, like throwing away certain things that we do not want or we do not need. Now, when you renovate your house, you throw away unnecessary things which are holding dust, throw away unnecessary things that are toxic. So carnal, earthly, and corrupt thoughts, we discard them. The minute the Holy Spirit points out, hey, this is not really good, maybe thoughts of vengeance, maybe thoughts of um, you know, giving in to temptation, discouraging thoughts, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, thoughts, of, uh, thoughts that are futile, and so on. Right? We discard, or we drop it off. You know, we don't entertain them. Secondly, to take on God's thoughts and God's ways, right? uh, which is the opposite of discarding. Right? So, God's thoughts, God's ways, we hold on. Um, okay, um, and then we tear down these strongholds. We bring down these strongholds. You know, we know there are certain things that have been stubborn, that have been part of our life for so many years, and we are not. You know, we are unable to move or see victory in those areas. Like these are strongholds. These need to be torn down, right? Brought down, and it starts by one thought. It starts with renewing of one thought at a time. Right? Um, and lastly, to meditate on the word of God. God's ways, God's thoughts, God's words are God's opinions, God's ideas. And these are powerful. God's word is powerful. God's word uh, washes us. And that is what we see. God's word, um, I just want to, uh, in James chapter 1 and verse 21, it says, receive the implanted word, which is able to save our soul. Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save our soul. So we meditate on the word of God and also pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in tongues, which builds us up in the inner man. And uh, uh, you know we are edified, uh, we are made strong in our spirit, and uh, we are renewed to have the mind of Christ. Right? So these are some uh, simple ways by which we can renew our mind. Okay, so we'll stop here, and uh, maybe there are questions, um, and we will uh, we can discuss, we can answer those questions. Um, other faculty also there, they will also answer. So it's... Thank you, Pastor uh, Jay Kumar, for uh, sharing on the renewed mind, the key for transformation. Uh, Rin has a question. Says, Pastor, how do we know if the thoughts that we have? Are from our own, or from the devil, or from God? Okay, um, the source of our thoughts. So we know that um, you know what is the objective of that thought, right? If uh, we see that uh, when something is from God, uh, uh, especially uh, I'm just thinking of uh, John chapter ten, that the um, the good shepherd he comes to give life and in, in give life in in its fullness. Right? The enemy comes to steal and kill and destroy. And if something that is uh, that is blocking us from living uh, a full life that that Lord the Lord wants to live, if something is inducing us to uh, live a substandard life, you know, it can be in terms of giving in to temptation. It could be in terms of um, not pursuing the destiny that God has for us, not seeking first God. Uh, and his uh, kingdom, right? Righteousness and kingdom. So, so we know that these are thoughts which are not helpful. 
right? And immediately there is there is a check. If you are believers, there is a check in the, in our spirit by the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit uh, is grieved when we entertain such thoughts. The Holy Spirit immediately, you know, there is a witness in our spirit that something is not right, and uh, and we know the source is. You know, either it could be our unrenewed mind, un or maybe our fleshly thinking, or it could be from the enemy. Right? But when it's from God, we see that it's pure, as the Word of God says, it's pure, it's uh, it's peaceable, and uh, it's holy and uh, virtuous. Right? And so we can pursue it, we can entertain it, we can take these. Right? And 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 the, and the most important thing is that it's in line with the with the word, right? it does not contradict the word. It is in line with the word. Uh, anyone else wants to add? Please go ahead. How do we distinguish? Um, I'll just add to what Pastor Jekma just shared in uh, James three fifteen to eighteen. Uh, it just contrasts wisdom that comes from above and wisdom that's from the world. So uh, wisdom that's from above, it you know, uh, it tells us it's uh, it's um, it's it's pure, it's peaceful, it's gentle, it's willing to yield, uh, it's merciful, it has good fruit, it's without partiality, without hypocrisy. So if our thoughts kind of fit in that framework, we know it's from God. Um, whereas then you know in that same passage it says what's from you know what is uh, in envy, self-seeking, something that brings confusion, uh, something that disturbs. That's the opposite of all this. It's uh, earthly, sensual, demonic. So uh, that's uh, a good way to kind of just quickly distinguish: is it from God? Is it not? Thank you, Pastor Jay Kumar and Pastor Ashish. I hope we answered your question, Rin. Okay, uh, we'll move on to the next question. Uh, how do we handle dreams that affect our thoughts negatively that are always persistent? How do we handle dreams that affect our thoughts negatively that are always persistent? Um, does anyone else want to handle this question? Um, okay, I'll just share. Um, so we handle it the same way we would handle a negative thought uh, when we know that uh, this particular dream is not edifying, right? It's causing fear, or it's causing me to act in ways that are uh, that God wouldn't want me to act, right? Maybe it's causing me to, you know, maybe it's a lustful dream, or maybe it's a dream which is causing fear. Um, so then, then we treat it the same way. The way we would treat a negative thought or a, you know, a thought that is coming from any other source uh, apart from God, so we would we would discard it. We would not entertain it, and 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 the, and the challenge is here. You know, it is uh, uh, saying that it's persistent. You know, it's a recurring dream. Um, then we need to deal with it. Uh, maybe it's uh, it's the source is the enemy. Uh, maybe it is uh, you know it is demonic in nature. We have been given the authority. You know. To, to deal with it, so we pray and we and we declare and we uh, and we break the power of the enemy. Um, also, I think it, it's good to look into our own lives and see: um, Have I been, you know, what what is it that I'm opening myself to? You know, it could be something that I'm reading, something that I'm listening to, something that I'm watching. You know, uh, is that influencing uh, my my dream? Right? Because a dream is, um, uh, it, it could come from, it could come because of that, because of much activity, um, things that are, that we are actually putting in into our into our soul, into our mind. So it could come because of that also. Um, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Thank you, Pastor Jay Kumar. I think it's important, uh, you know, what we are reading, what we are watching, uh, what we are indulging in uh, the entire day, because, uh, you know, that, you know, we have one of the sources of uh, dreams is, uh, you know, what our mind is preoccupied with. So uh, if we are preoccupied with things that are of the carnal mind, uh, 
uh, that are of the fleshly mind or of the carnal nature or the natural mind, then, you know, we would have these uh, negative dreams and thoughts. And so uh, we need to, um, you know, uh, get ourselves off things that we are watching that is not edifying, that's not building our spirit man. And, uh, uh, you know, our dreams and thoughts would uh, naturally change to some things that are positive because God speaks to us uh, through dreams. And uh, our dreams can also be useful in ways in which God can speak and minister to us. Yeah. Thank you for that question. I hope we answered your question. Okay, we'll move on to the next question. Uh, Sri Radha, uh, when we pray to resist our worldly thoughts, we declare the word, but still those thoughts come back sometimes. Is it intentional? Can any one of our faculty help in answering this question? Uh, Sri Radha's question. When we pray to resist our worldly thoughts, we declare the word, but uh, still those thoughts come back sometimes. Is it intentional? Anyone would like to answer that? Yes, uh, yes, Pastor Selina, I'll uh, try to share my thoughts. Um, so when we resist worldly thoughts uh, and we also declare the word, um, some thoughts come back. Uh, and uh, Shirada, we must look at this as um, uh, it's not that our uh, confession of the word, our declaration of the word is uh, not working, but we need to give it some time. Uh, and you know, I would look at it that way. So continue doing uh, what you're doing. Continue to um, you know remain in the word. And uh, uh, sometimes it takes a while before we see those those worldly, fleshly thoughts uh, in us uprooted and uh, the mind completely renewed. So uh, it's just a matter of time, and it's a matter of persisting uh, in the word. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Uh... I think it's uh, more than just declaring God's word at those instances when uh, we have these worldly thoughts. It's important for us to, uh, you know, fill our mind with the word of God. The more we are filling our mind with the word of God, you know, the uh, then, you know, we won't, uh, yeah, these worldly thoughts, you will find that uh, would not be more uh, intentional, will not uh, be frequent, but, uh, you know, and we will also be able to discern uh, what is good and bad. We will also be able to think in terms of what the word of God uh, uh, says. So I think we, it's important for us to more fill our mind with the word of God uh, and also, yes, declare the word which will help. Thank you, Pastor Nancy, for uh, sharing your thoughts. I hope we answered your questions, Sri Radha. Uh, we'll move on to Rin's question. Uh, when our thoughts are clouded with evil and the filth of this world, to renew our minds quickly, what should we think of? When our thoughts are clouded with evil and the filth of this world, to renew our minds quickly, what should we think of? So, um, see, one of the things that we need to understand is, um, you know, what um, generally what Satan tries to um, deceive us is that uh, uh, we don't have control over our thoughts, right? So, um, and sin, sin tries to deceive us that we don't have authority over our thoughts, but that's not true, right? We can actually choose what to think about. We can choose to stop thinking about certain thing and certain things, and uh, we can choose not to, right? So you can choose uh, what we want to think about, but our will needs to be strong are saying yes i will think about that that yes has to be strong and that is what satan attacks where uh, you know when we read the book, when we read james 1 it talks about how our will is weakened right because of constant battering of these thoughts and we are giving in to temptation we are ensnared uh, you know by our own desires right so um, so the thing is that so uh, we need to understand that right so when we when we when we are discarding or putting off certain things you know you can we can right and uh, how do we do it immediately well we can pray in the spirit uh, praying in the spirit praying in tongues definitely we can do that we can sing in the spirit 
you know, singing is even one step further where our emotions are involved, um, and we can sing um, and praise and worship God if if the environment is conducive, right? We can do that, and that takes that shifts our focus uh, from from these thoughts into what we need to be actually meditating on, right? So uh, renewal again, it's it's a process, um, but we can it is shift our focus uh, uh, immediately, right? I hope that helps. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I hope that helps, uh, Rin. OK. Um, we'll have Anand Paul, who's raised his hand. So Anand, you can unmute your mic and ask your question. Pastor, I have a question. Many times uh, we want to change, but on uh, different situations are coming. And uh, we are not able to change. So what will I do, bro? Uh, what will I do? OK, so uh, this question is, uh, want to change, but I'm unable to. And so what should I do? Um, OK, does anyone want to take up that question? Um, like in addition to persisting in what we are doing, um, anything else that you can add? Um, yeah, just just a thought here. You know, so um, uh, we need to you know uh, change in our lives uh, uh, can happen, uh, even if it seems even if it seems impossible. Uh, of course, our will is involved. That means we must be willing to change. But the power to change comes from God. And so uh, this is where we ask the Holy Spirit for help. Um, because one, the Bible tells us, right? We are uh, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. The Bible tells us that we are all changed from glory to glory into that same image of Jesus by the Spirit of God. So change is possible, and the Holy Spirit is going to help us change, which means the Holy Spirit is more powerful than anything that's hindering the change in our lives, whatever it may be, it may be wrong thought, it may be a stronghold in our mind, it may be some bad experience that we've had, whatever, you know, whatever we've gone through, whatever seems to be hindering that change, the Spirit of God is more powerful. So from our side, we must be willing to change, then the Holy Spirit empowers that change. So um, uh, the second, uh, the other things I would add to this is, of course, the word of God, which uh, Pastor Selene has been emphasizing, the word of God. And thirdly, we need each other. So sometimes in order to bring about a change in my life, I need to get help. And that help comes through another human being, another believer. Right? So that believer can speak into my life, that believer can motivate me, can encourage me, can journey with me. Right. So uh, Paul writes about this in Galatians chapter 6, verses 1, 2, and 3, Right. that uh, you know, we ought to support one another. We have to help each other, carry each other's burdens. Right. So that means I come alongside and I help somebody, a part of the journey. So this is why, you know, we... Of course, in a, in a very formal way, we would call it counseling, or we would call it mentoring, or you know, whatever we want to call it. But it's somebody else coming alongside you to help you make that change. So God is working change in us through his word, through his spirit, and with somebody else, with other believers. Right? And uh, I'll, I'll just close with this verse, right? Paul says in Philippians 2, uh, verse, verse 13, he says, It is God who is at work in us both to make us willing and able to do his will right so god is working in us and he's doing two things he's making us willing he's making us able so the the thing is change is possible uh, when we open ourselves to god and all we have to do is say god I, I need that change i want the change then god works in us he makes us willing and able uh, to do his will thanks Thank you, Pastor Ashish. Uh, I hope we answered your question, Anand Paul. Uh, we'll go on to the next question from uh, Prince Vidya Deep. 
uh, Pastor, when renewing the mind, especially when it comes to tearing down the stronghold, there can be some wrong beliefs, thoughts that are view about certain things that were in our mind for a long time and tearing down and discarding those thoughts and stronghold is not easy and results will not be immediate sometimes and it's frustrating and disappointing. So how can we handle those situations? If our faculty would like to answer this question. Yeah, um, so Prince, uh, yes, when it comes to um, you know, tearing down strongholds, these are things that have been built into our minds uh, over a period of time, right? Experiences, good, bad, you know, and uh, along with that, some imaginations and emotions, everything is there, tied in there. So uh, it's it becomes part of us and it's so, so entrenched in us. Um, but the thing is that when the Word of God declares that transformation is possible, we know that it is, you know, that is the truth, right? So whatever be our experience, um, we can persist with the truth. We know that it's a process. We know that these things are deeply entrenched, but it can be brought down. Um, all reasonings, all arguments, uh, everything can be and will be brought down um, by the Word of God, by the Spirit of God, right? And even as we cooperate, uh, and, and like what Pastor shared just now, there's nothing that is uh, more powerful right, than the Holy Spirit and um, His ability to help us and uh, His power in our lives. Right, so and he's the one who gives us the makes us willing and able, right? So, so that's the thing. So the thing is, what do we expect? You know, what to expect when we come face to face with truth, uh, and uh, when that contradicts something that we have been holding on to, or which has been part of our lives, we can expect discomfort, right? It is, uh, it's because it's very opposite of what we have been holding dearly, or the or the thought patterns and behaviors that we normally like. Uh, default to in a situation this is what i do right um but but the, when the when we encounter truth it can be uncomfortable right it can be painful even right and when we want to walk in truth it can seem very you know very different or uh, you know when we are renewing our mind to the truth and saying no i'm not going to i'm, I'm not going to take vengeance on that person i'm not going to shout back you know it it can be a struggle Right, and, um, and and that is expected. So you you tell yourself, yeah, this is how it's going to be. But then I'm going to persist. You know, I'm going to go through. And uh, we know that the flesh always struggles against the things of the spirit, and the, you know the, the whatever the Holy Spirit brings uh, to us is against the things of the flesh. So there is that that conflict, that struggle. But praise God, when we see, you know, um, talks about how when we are led by the Spirit of God, we will not fulfill, okay? So um, the lust of the flesh, right? So, yeah, so that is what I would say. Um, anything else? That, um... Thank you, uh, Pastor Jay Kumar. I hope we answered your question, Prince. Oh, we'll move on to the next question. Uh, at what point does God give us up to our worldly thoughts or a debased mind? Um, thank you for that question. Uh, if you look at Romans chapter 1, um, you know, uh, Paul is writing to the church at Rome and he says that um, in verse, um, in verse um, 18, says, uh, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in uh, unrighteousness. So after knowing the truth and you suppress the truth and you willingly do not conform to the truth or to the pattern of God's word, uh, then God will give you up to you know your own choice, whatever you want to uh, do however you want to go. Uh, also, in the same chapter, it says that, you know, uh, uh, the God has uh, made known his invisible attributes through creation, 
uh, the eternal power of God is visible in creation, so men are without excuse. But even after knowing God, you know, they don't glorify him as God. Verse 21, nor were thankful, uh, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were uh, darkened. So two things here is, you know, after knowing the truth, you don't live the truth, you don't conform to the truth, but you willingly uh, choose to go in ways of unrighteousness, then God will give you up to your own, um, uh, you know, uh, desires and choice that you want to make. And also after knowing God, but you don't uh, glorify him as God, you don't give him uh, the rightful place in your life, uh, could also, you know, God, you know, can also lead you to going to worldly, into worldly thoughts and to having a debased uh, mind. Uh, can any of the other faculty want to add to this question? Okay, I hope uh, we answered your question. Uh, we'll move on to the next question, uh, again from Rin. Uh, Pastor, uh, we can go for counseling if we are struggling with our thoughts, right? Yes, you, could, you can uh, meet a counselor, you can get help. Uh, you also have uh, the Holy Spirit in you who is the wonderful counselor who can ha help you and will counsel you and guide you. But yes, you can always uh, go to a counselor as well uh, if you're struggling with your uh, thoughts. And of course, the Word of God and the Holy Spirit is there always uh, to help you, to counsel you uh, uh, with the thoughts and, you know. Serena, sorry to uh, ask. Yeah. There are two hands that have gone up. Kofi Asante and uh, yeah, get food. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, so we'll have uh, Kofi uh, unmute your mic and ask a question, please. Thank you, Pastor Salina. My question has to do with Matthew chapter nineteen, verse sixteen and seventeen. A certain man went to Jesus Christ and asked what to do in order to be saved or to have eternal life. Jesus answered, saying, the man has to obey the commandment. Jesus asked the man to obey the commandment. This man justified himself by saying, it is something that he has been doing. Jesus went further and said, he should sell all his things, the, good, the properties that he has, and then come and follow him. I would like to know at what point is this man transformation going to take place? Is this at the point of obeying the commandment or at the point of selling what he has? At one point, is transformation going to take place? Transform transformation of the mind and the heart going to take place? Is it at the point of selling the things that he has or at the point of obeying the commandment? Thank you. Thank you, Kofi, for your question. Would any of our faculty like to answer Kofi's question, please? Um, yeah, Kofi, thank you for that question. Um, so I think we need to look at this this uh, this incident in its uh, entirety. So God is dealing. Uh, the Lord Jesus is uh, interacting with an individual, the rich man. So. Uh, you know, so the rich man, there's a context and there's a story in his life. So, and the Lord Jesus is addressing the real issues, but he's leading up to it. So every question he's asking is actually leading up to the transformation or everything he's saying. So the first thing is, he's, he's pointing to the law, keep the commandments. Now, that doesn't mean that salvation comes through keeping the commandments, but the reason Jesus is doing that is because he knows this person. He, in the sense, you know, this man is a man who, who has been living by this, but Jesus is leading up to something. The real issue with this rich young man is, is his love for his earthly possessions. But Jesus is starting at a point where this man is very comfortable. He's very comfortable in the sense that, hey, I've been a very morally upright person. I've been living by the law. So when Jesus says, you know, you keep you keep the commandments. So yeah, I've done all of that already. Very good. He's made this man very comfortable, but he's going to move towards the real issue. What's the real issue? It's his love for money. 
right? So then Jesus challenges him. He says, okay, you've done that. You've kept all the commandments. So morally you're upright, but the problem is in your heart. And what's the problem? It's not the problem that he had a lot of riches. The problem is his heart is so tied up with those riches. So that's where Jesus challenges him. Can he go sell everything and come follow me? And that's what he couldn't do. It, right? So in this particular case, in this individual's case, we can't, you know, this is one particular incident. We can't take it and apply it to everybody. But Jesus is really dealing with a heart issue. So to answer your question, real transformation will come when the heart is changed and the heart is fully set upon Jesus. And for each of us, it's different, meaning in this particular case, this, this rich man's heart was set upon his riches. For somebody else, their heart may be set upon something else, right? But for us to follow Jesus and real transformation will happen when our heart is fully set upon Jesus. I hope that helps. Now, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Ashish. Uh, we've come to the end of thank our... You, Pastor. Uh, Thank you, Kofi. Uh, we've come to the end of our mentoring art. I see Get Truth's hand and uh, Sanjay's hand up or Satish's hand up. We also have Lucy's question. Lucy, I made a note of your question. So next week when uh, we begin our mentoring hour, we will answer your question. We will also have Get Truth and Satish uh, ask your question and we will answer that next week. Sorry, we ran out of time. Uh, we'll end this mentoring hour. Thank you all for being part of this mentoring hour. Have a blessed uh, day. God bless you. Thank you. Pastor Nancy, would you uh, like to stop the recording?